Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture 33 and uh, as usual we will recall what we learned in the last lecture. We basically looked at uh, the why we will go for real cycle analysis and how to handle the uh, losses uh, in case of ideal uh, in the losses incurred in the engines and incorporate in the ideal cycles as that it will be almost closer to the real cycle right in a in an aircraft engines aircraft engine i mean only for the gas turbine engine so what are the those things we have looked at various components for example we have defined the pressure recovery factor in case of an air intake then we have also looked at isentropic efficiency for air intake and for compressor turbine, but then we also looked at that it is not good enough to use isentropic efficiency particularly for the compressor and turbine and we will be using polytropic efficiency and note that we got a relationship how you can relate the polytropic efficiency with the isentropic efficiency. But however, in case of the nozzle and air intake, we will be using the isentropic efficiency, right. But that is not really playing very major role. Why? Because the heat addition or the heat extraction is not there except during expansion and compression, like that is the not extraction, rather it is being changed. In case of compression and turbine, you are getting some work done in case of turbine and you are giving work to the fluid or the energy transfer takes place when you give work to the compressor. So, armed with all those things you know uh, parameters and also a parameters which we will be considering in case of combustors are burner efficiency and pressure ratio across the burner right. Today, we will be looking at how to incorporate those you know efficiencies and other uh, pressure ratios into our calculation and carry out a parametric cycle analysis for turbojet engine and we will derive the similar expression what we had done in case of ideal turbojet engine. Then we will take an example to see how we can you know use that for solving the problem or looking at you know various aspect and what it really does. So, we will as I told you real cycle analysis will be uh, looking at uh, you know carrying out for an for a turbo jet engines and this is as usual the turbo jet engine I am just repeating some of them. So, that it will be ingrained in your mind that it is having air intake that means, all the process of compression in air intake is taking place the station 0 to 2 and <coughs> uh, as you know very well that uh, there is a compressor and turbine compressor and the turbine and the work done by the turbine is mean to than the compression right. And the, the thrust obtained by turbojet engine is uh, basically due to the expansion in the nozzle. In this case, I have used a what to call conversion nozzle as shown, but however, a conversion diversion nozzle can be used and we will be restricting our discussion uh, particularly to the conversion nozzle and I will be mentioning about the conversion diversion nozzle also. So, the what are the processes in T S diagram and uh, if you look at 0 to 2 that is your what you call air intake right. In case of uh, 
your isentropic because uh, this is a solid line right what we are considering right and keep in mind that all the time we will be using the dashed line to show the real process why because this is non isentropic in nature and as it is non isentropic so you cannot show in a ts or pv diagram you must be knowing from the thermodynamic point of view but however we have joined this line right as a dashed line to make it more prominent for that you can appreciate so uh, from station 2 to 3 is the compression which i have shown here as a, what you call real process there is a dashed line and keep in mind that the some process process here i have not drawn because the pressure you know the if i could have gone by this it could have been higher than the pt3 and uh, this is a combustion chamber where if you look at the process is taking plus pressure pt3 line to the pt4 right keep in mind that pt3 is less than pt4 sorry pt4 is less than pt3 right because this is the lower pressure and there is a losses in pressure in ideal case the heat addition could have taken place in this line you know this line along with the pt3 right in real case it is the less than pt4 is less than pt3 is that clear that means there is a loss in the total pressure in case of combustion chamber not only that there will be also the uh, you know uh, incomplete combustion in the combustor as a result the burner efficiency has to be included in the analysis and this is your basically combustion chamber and the gas is expanded in the in the turbine right this is turbine from station t4 to the t5 right the ideal process could have been taken place in this solid line and the dashed line indicates the real process and this is expansion in what you call nozzle that is from t5 to the p9 so if you look at uh, i have you might be thinking why these two line are in the same you know like uh, t5 and t9 because here we are assuming the flow to be adiabatic although it is isentropic but adiabatic similarly uh, uh, you know case of a air intake that is T t naught is equal to T t 2 right because we are considering is an adiabatic. But in real situation is it possible the process should be uh, adiabatic in case of either air intake or in nozzle certainly no there will be some losses into there, but we are not considering in real cycle because it is difficult to estimate and those numbers are very small you know particularly air intake it will be small but in nozzle it will be higher because the temperature is higher right okay and it is uh, taking place in a the residence time is small also right because it will be nozzle it will be very high velocity so therefore considering this fact we have not considered that this is again little bit idealization we are using at this moment okay so that is one point you should keep in mind. So, armed with this now we will carry out the similar analysis what we had done in case of a ideal cycle. However, we will incorporate the uh, what you call various parameters which can take care of the losses in each component. So, the uninstalled thrust for the turbo jet engine uh, is expressed as we know that T is equal to m naught 9 v 9 minus m naught v naught this is due to the momentum you know change of the flow and this is the pressure thrust a 9 is the area of the nozzle exit and p 9 minus p 9 and we had neglected this term pressure thrust that means we are saying it is fully expanded but in real situation it can never be happen right except at the design condition right so therefore we need to take care of that 
and equation uh, you know 1 we can express as a uh, specific thrust if I will do what I will do I can divide it by m naught here similarly m naught here I can divide it by m naught here right. Okay. So, if I divided that I will get an expression is basically I can take a naught out also m naught 9 divided by m naught right uh, for and then v 9 by a naught if you look at this term is usual like we had already derived relationship for this and this is your flight Mach number you know minus m naught that is your flight Mach number right. And a 9 if I take p 9 out what I will get in the bracket is 1 minus p naught divided by p 9 and m naught I have added. So, if you look at we have already uh, you know looked at other v 9 a naught terms we will be looking again little bit just to see how these losses will be incorporated in that. And let us look at this portion you know which we have neglected in the case of your ideal cycle we will consider this portion first see that what uh, whether we can express in terms some certain known quantities particularly v 9 by a naught m 9 by m naught or not something or not. Is it possible we can convert that in terms of m naught 9 divided by m naught and v 9 by a naught? It is uh, possible let us see how we can if we do that then it will be easier for to do a parametric analysis keep in mind that when we will be solving problem you need not to do that. Okay. Here we are interested to club or the separate the parameters which you can vary right that is the beauty of this analysis which is meant for uh, you know uh, to be used as a design tool. So, let us look at a 9 by p 9 divided by m naught I can write down m naught 9 right in the I can write down here m 9 not 9 divided by rho 9 v 9 a 9 right and that is nothing but that. So, I have done in the same. So, that that means m not 9 by m naught this is the term already we have got which is similar to the momentum thrust expression you know like and a 9 and p 9 divided by rho 9 v 9 a 9 and using ideal gas law right. I can express rho 9 as p 9 r 9 t 9. So, I can uh, you know cancel this p 9 and uh, what else I can cancel? I can cancel this a 9 right area of the nozzle exit right. So, I will get m naught 9 divided by m naught and r 9 t 9 by v 9. What I will do? I will multiply it you know uh, what you call in the numerator a naught square that is the speed of sound at the say free uh, what you call free stream and divide by gamma a r naught t naught because I am just doing a naught square and this is nothing but if you look at a naught square right. Yes, can I not do that? I mean there is nothing harm in doing am I right? The same thing. So, I will get here and I can write down this R 9 is nothing but R g we are using R g means one value with respect to the higher temperature we will be using and similarly R a for the a what we will be using this is you keep in mind this is the universe sorry gas constant right. This is the gas constant specific gas constant right. So, uh, and T 9 by T naught I can write down and V uh, 9 by A naught if you look at this term is similar to that of the momentum thrust continue, uh, you know and gamma A, gamma A is uh, we will be using 1.4. So, that means with this term you know this term we can we have expressed in terms of M naught M naught 9 M uh, divided by M naught 0 and v 9 by a naught and all those things are known and this is also another term which we will be using right. We can get expression for this. Then we will get then we can also evaluate this portion where 
we need not to know the A9, right. I should know that because here it is a what we call is a um, rubber engine what we do, we are not decided yet the what the dimensions. So, therefore, A9 may not be available to you, right. But however, we can carry out the analysis, you know in the preliminary analysis, we call it of design analysis, right, because we have not designed, we are, right. And later on we can do the on design analysis, of course, that is not a part of your course, but it can be similarly it can be done, right. However, we can uh, write m naught 9 divided by m naught in terms of fuel air ratio by striking a mass balance across the turbo jet engine, which we have already done, but let us do that m naught 9 is equal to m naught uh, m dot naught plus m dot f. And if I divide it by this m naught here, I will get m naught 9 divided by uh, m naught is equal to 1 plus m dot f, because f is nothing but f by m naught that we know that fuel a, a ratio, right. We have already know. So, And uh, we can write down V 9 by A naught as root over gamma G R Z T 9 divided by gamma A R A T 9 into M 9, right. And earlier what we are doing? We are saying this gamma G gamma A is same, but now we will not consider again that you know the real uh, effect is coming into picture. Similarly, R G need not to be same as R A, right. Then it is coming into picture of course, T 9 by T naught, this would be T naught, right. T 9 by T naught will be, again we will have to determine and M 9 will determine, so that, that we can get this term. We will be following the same way, I mean there is nothing difference except how we are now considering various effects of gamma G, gamma A, R G, R A, you know all those things and also efficiency will be coming to pictures, pressure losses will be coming to pictures, right. So, by using isentropic relation, we can get you know in the similar manner m 9 is root over 2 by gamma g minus 1 p t 9 by p 9 gamma g minus 1 divided by gamma g minus 1. This is similar from the you know like which we have already done from the isentropic relation. Now, what we will do? We will write down this p t 9 by p 9, right. <coughs> same as that of P T 9 by P T 5 into P T 5 by P T 4, P T 4 into P T 3 into P T 3 by P T 2 into P T 2 by P T naught into P T naught by P naught and P naught by P 9. Earlier what we are saying that P naught is same as P 9, right. We cannot afford to say at this moment, it is not fully expanded. I cannot say P naught is equal to P 9 in the case of real cycling. It can be, it can be if it is fully expanded. If it is not, it will be different. It can be over expanded, it can be under expanded. So, now what are these terms? If you look at P T 9 by P T 5 is nothing but your, this is pi, this portion is pi nozzle. P T 5 by P T 4 is nothing but your pi turbine and P T 4 by P T 3 is nothing but your pi B burner, P T 3 by P T 2 is nothing but your pi C, P T 2 by P T naught is nothing but your pi D and this is pi R, right. Yes or no, you look at the diagram which I have shown here, this portion P T 5 by P T 9 is your nozzle and 5 to 4 is your turbine, right and 4 to 3 is your combustion chamber, right and 3 to 2 is your compressor and 0 to 2, 2 to 0 is your diffuser or air intake, right. Of course, T naught to uh, total to the P 0 static is nothing but your pi r. So, and if you look at like uh, you know these are the things which we need to consider and we must know what is P 9 by P uh, or P naught divided by P 9 value. P naught will be given to you, but 
whether we know P 9, we really do not know that, right. That must be given or we will have to evaluate, right. How we will evaluate? If it is a conversion diversion nozzle, it is quite difficult, is not it, right. Huh? You can find how? Isentropic relation we cannot apply. But we are not using polytopic efficiency for your nozzle, right. Okay. So, therefore, and you do not know really what will be the exit because there are various losses are there, and this P9 will be decided by the various losses, right. And P0, of course, you can find out what is the ambient. So, therefore, it is not that easy to find out that, right. But however, if it is a conversion nozzle, you can do very easily. So, from previous analysis, we know that T 9 by T naught is nothing but T T 9 divided by T 9 in the numerator, denominator will be T T 9 by T 9. T T 9 by T 9, you can write down P T 9 by P 9 gamma z minus 1 divided by gamma z, right. And T T 9, we need to evaluate what it would be. We will be using the similar way, you please keep this diagram at the, with the station number in mind and we will be using the same way what we did for the pressure. Basically, we are expressing T T 9 by T 9 in terms of temperature ratios across each component. This is for the total, but now we are making it each component to carry out a psych, uh, what you call analysis, right. That is the reason. So, where T T 9 by T naught, we can write down T T 9 by T T 5 into T T 5 by T T 4, T T 4 by T T 3, T T 3 by T T 2 into T T 2 by T T naught, T T naught by T naught. If you look at what is this thing, this is your tau nozzle, this is your tau turbine, this is your tau B, this is your tau C and this is your tau D and this is your tau r, right, is not it. Now, in this case, uh, we know that this will be tau d will be 1, right, is not it. Total temperature remain constant in case of a diffusion and similarly, tau n is 1. So, if you look at, then I can get write down all those things because in this case, this is 1 and this is 1. So, I will get tau t, tau b, tau c, tau r, right. And if you want to do further, you know you can return tau n and tau d, I can improve this real cycle analysis, but I must know how to do that, how to put a value for that, it should be known, right. So, that part portion of course, is not being used generally, but however, it can be done very, you know, if one can think little bit critically and find out ways and means. So, now let us strike an energy balance across a combustion chamber by invoking the first law of thermodynamics for a steady flow process, right. See, if you look at all whatever you are doing is for steady flow process, but in aircraft need not to be steady, except your passenger aircraft in a level flight it will be may be steady. But still then sometimes you know turbulence will be coming into picture, some unsteadiness will be there, right, right. So, therefore, it cannot really be the steady, but you can assume it to be quasi steady, right. So, now com uh, combustion chamber having a station number 3 and 4 at the inlet and exit respectively, and we know this uh, you know air is entering, you are adding some heat fuel you know being burnt, and then you can get so uh, you know product. So, if you look at M naught C P A T T 3 that is the amount of enthalpy is entering into the m dot f delta S c and that is the heat release due to the combustion, but all the fuel cannot be converted into the complete product. So, therefore, there will be an efficiency, this is known as burner efficiency. We have already defined and it will be less than always 1 is equal to m dot 4 C p g T t 4 and m dot 4 is nothing but m dot m dot O plus m dot F and C P G. So, what I will do, I can divide this thing, you know, 
by all the terms m naught c p a is not it c p a and similarly m naught c p a. If I do that I will you know uh, manipulate this simplification I think this is not equation I will get T T 3 right. If I will this will cancel it out and then this will be nothing but your eta b m dot f m naught delta s c by c p a and 1 plus m dot uh, m dot f divided by m naught c p z c p a t t 4. And keep in mind that this is nothing but your f, this is nothing but your f. What I will do? I will get an expression for f basically by little manipulation. I will take this f into this uh, this side and take this you know uh, or I can take this term to that side any one so that f will be one side. So, if I will do that I will get f eta b delta s c c p t naught minus c p g t t 4 uh, c p a right and is equal to c p z t t 4 c p a minus t t 3 t t 2 right. Uh, but how I am doing that? Because I am basically dividing this by the what you call T naught right. If I divide it by this T naught here similarly T naught here and T naught here right. I can do that. So, I am getting that and instead of T naught I can write down T T 2 you know because we know T T 2 is equal to T T naught right. So, what this term you could uh, recognize, you know, can you recognize some terms like uh, C P Z by T T 4 C P A T naught this term that is your tau lambda right. So, similarly this is also tau lambda right. So, I can get and what is this one tau C this is your tau r, yes or no. So, now I can write down you know I, as I told you tau lambda is C p g by T t 4 divided by C p a T naught. So, I can get an expression f is equal to tau lambda minus tau r tau c divided by eta b delta s c C p a T naught minus tau lambda. So, this expression you know if you look at when you look at your uh, earlier you know it was not that complex right am i right it was a simple now a lot of terms have come up and is that but when you know eta b will be one you will find that it is same as that of the ideal cycle so that means if you know the formula for the real cycle you can get very easily ideal cycle that is the crux of the this analysis so, we will see as we go along let us strike a uh, energy balance uh, that is for you know that all the work uh, you know harness by the turbine is being used by the compression right that is for the turbulent engine. So, then we can uh, write down by using the first law of thermodynamics that is m naught C p a T t 3 minus T t 2 will eta m this is your mechanical efficiency right. into m naught 4 C p z a T t 4 minus T t 5. What is this mechanical efficiency? Basically, this is because the work is transferred from turbine to the compressor through a shaft. So, all the work cannot be transferred. It will be you know less than the water being transferred can be reach the compression. So, that is because of shaft and friction and other things you know like therefore, it will be always less than 1. So, we are using this again. So, uh, by algebraic manipulation we can get you know tau t is equal to 1 minus 1 over eta m 1 plus f tau r divided by tau lambda and tau c in the bracket tau c minus 1. If you look at for uh, I mean like this small algebra I am just uh, skipping right you can do yourself and if you look at this is same as that of ideal cycle under what condition when f is what 
will be 0 right is not it and eta will be eta m will be 1 that means, this term will become 1 for ideal cycle. Then tau t is same as that you can look at your note you will get that it is same that. So, now uh, you know we need to find out tau t uh, uh, you know like we have already uh, and we love to sorry now we need to find out pi t by knowing the tau t because tau t is known to us if I know tau c right tau c how we will get I should know the pressure ratio across the compressor. If I know the pressure ratio across the compressor I can get tau c or not. by using polytropic efficiency which we had derived in the last lecture right. And if I know this I know this tau r by the flat Mach number tau lambda I know. So, I know all those things I can get the tau t and getting the tau t we can get the pi t because that is very important right. Pi t will be tau t power to the gamma z divided by gamma z minus 1 eta p t this is polytropic efficiency of turbine. right of turbine. So, uh, similarly total pressure ratio across the compressor can be determined you know right if I know the tau c or tau c can be determined if I know the pi c by using the polytropy efficiency of the compressor and gamma of course, is known to you we will be using gamma. Uh, is 1.4 right for gamma. So, now we can express this because we have now come to the turbine now we need to look at the nozzle part right. Nozzle part means we can express this T T 9 by T 9 you know across the nozzle in terms of Mach number right. We need to know that right and uh, how we will do that that is the question when the losses is there right. And if you look at uh, for that we can basically look at whether is a conversion nozzle whether it is choked or unchoked right. For example, if I consider the what are the processes happening under a unchoked condition. So, this is my uh, condition is a P T 5 right ok. P T 5 uh, is the my inlet for the nozzle right I can consider. And whereas, the P T 9 is is a lower than that what is the total pressure corresponding to the nozzle exit that is P 9 right this is the static pressure P 9 right. And here we are assuming you know it is unchoked in a conversion nozzle if you look at we are considering a conversion nozzle only this you can say as a 5, this is 9 right or you can consider this as a 9, but there is a difference in the pressure right ok. This is your nozzle. Now, if you look at in this case T T 5 is equal to T T 9 because it is a adiabatic process that is what I put it here you know T T 5 is same as the T 9, but if it is unchoked right then expansion will be there you need not worry about because it is P T 9 is equal to P naught in the conversion nozzle you know like there is no over expansion under, under expansion kind of thing right. This all these over expansion other expansion will come when it is conversion diversion nozzle. So, therefore, it is very easy to look at it and you can you know, but if it is a choked one what will happen that if the process is taking place here it is to be choked this is a choked condition in a non -isen, uh, sorry uh, non isentropic flow condition, but isentropic it will be C S here which will be the same pressure if I go for, but in actual situation it will be 
C s isentropic critical pressure like that is the V t square by T c g right. Now, the main problem will come how we can determine the whether the it is choked or non choked. That means, we need to determine that by considering the pressure ratio across the nozzle is less than equal to the choked pressure ratio or not. Right? If it is less than, then it is unchoked. If it is greater than or equal to, then it is choked. But all those things we cannot consider here, because it is not isentropic. So, the losses will be there. Now, if losses are there, we need to consider the nozzle efficiency. How we will do that? So, that we will see now. Okay. So, and that is the craft and once you know that, then you will get the basically this is the choked condition and then that will be corresponding to the choked temperature right or the this thing condition to the T c right. If I know T c, I can get V 9 is equal to that root over gamma R g T c right, then I will get V 9. Otherwise, V 9 will be different depending upon unchoked condition. So, that is the part we will look at and we choked means what? As I told you T T 9 divided by T 9 is equal to T T 5 by T C. If I say is a choked condition, T 9 is same as the T C we are saying. Then it will Mach number is equal to 1. So, this is gamma g divided by 2. Right? <coughs> now, from knowing this, you know you know gamma g. So, you know this T T 5. So, you can get very easily T C or T 9, because T T 5 will be known here from whatever you have done the calculation, we will be knowing, but we would not be knowing whether this you know choked or not. Suppose, it are not choked and you are taking this condition, then you will be in trouble. So, for that we invoke the definition of the efficiency right to derive efficiency means isentropic efficiency for the nozzle to derive an expression for temperature ratio T c s by T t 5 for uh, isentropic process in terms of non isentropic temperature T c by T t 5 as since expansion process is non isentropic. For example, this thing is a isentropic T t s by T t 5 is equal to we can write down 1 minus eta i n 1 minus T c divided by T t 5. This is basically coming from the definition of what? Definition of eta i n right is not it. It is coming from the definition of eta i n isentropic efficiency. So, by equation uh, by using equation Ison relation we can derive as P c by T t 5 is nothing but T c s divided by T t 5. This is an isentropic process. So, we can very easily do that and gamma z divided by gamma g minus 1 and what we will do? We will put this expression 3 here and get that right. That means, we if I know this right, I, uh, I know this uh, T c and T t 5 right and I can find out what will be P c by P t 5 right. So, then we can express that P t 5 by P c right in terms of uh, you know this expression will come over here. So, I will get 1 over 1 minus 1 over eta i n gamma g minus 1 gamma g plus 1 right. So, we can get this expression if we know this right. Then because eta n is known and gamma g is known. So, you can get this expression and once you know this then you can find out whether it is choked or not choked. And from equation 4, we can we find that pressure drop across the nozzle increases due to the frictional losses in nozzle right this thing and with the help of equation 4 and uh, other equation we can determine specific thrust. So, if you look at we are basically finding out all this expression V 9 by A naught, M naught is known 1 plus F we have already derived expression T 9 by T naught we have already found out how to go about it. 
and you know we need to find out this or in the case of conversion diversion nozzle you know for C D nozzle right generally P naught by P 9 must be known right. If you know this then you can derive if it is choked one you know you can do that. So, it must be noted that a equation for specific thrust bit complicated as compared to ideal turbogenesis. Next step of course, is to find out the T s f c and following that f by T s and uh, is a similar way we can find out propulsive efficiency T s v naught and you know all these things we know it is similar to that ideal cycle only thing that 1 f 1 plus f is coming into pictures right rest of the things are similar. So, you can get the overall efficiency for the expression. Now, what I am thinking now I will take an example I will uh, be little fast in doing that, but in the some point where we will be looking at critical pressure I will spend more time. But before that let us uh, look at the what is happening in the uh, by carrying out a specific thrust right. <coughs> So, if you look at uh, this, uh, we have taken some condition altitude 12 kilometer m naught 0 0.85 and T T 4 1600 Kelvin right. And this is basically ideal uh, we are using a dash line as a ideal one and the solid line as a real and we are doing a variation we are looking at variation of specific thrust per pressure ratio and on the right hand side we are looking at uh, what to call thrust specific fuel conduction right. And uh, if you look at this specific thrust you know increases and reach a peak value you know then it decreases right. And if you look at for this real one the peak values will be somewhere occurring here this is your peak value or the higher pressure. And whereas, for ideal one you know it is having similar trend, but peak values will be somewhere you know at different place kind of things or maybe uh, like uh, like here kind of thing which is not same as that of that. The different pressure ratio is occurring and keep in mind that the real cycle or the real one the specific thrust is much lower as compared to the ideal cycle because the dash line is an ideal right. And uh, because why there is a losses you will be there and as a result the mass flow rate you know what you need to have the same kind of thrust right will be higher. So, that specific thrust is lower because a lot of resistance you will be getting right and combustion efficiency would not be uh, you know uh, proper it will be less than 1 and pressure losses will be there. And similarly if you look at uh, this uh, the real cycle the T s f c decreases with the increase in the pressure ratio across the compressor. And for a uh, ideal one it is having similar trend, but however, the real will be having higher values T s f c because if you look at T s f c in this case uh, is shown it is much higher as compared to the uh, ideal cycle right. And which is obvious because the as I told that combustion you know efficiency will be lower and you need to burn more fuel to have the same kind of thrust right. So, therefore, you need to uh, I mean like pay penalty I mean like not pay penalty rather it is the reality is that ideal cycle will give you low T s f c as compared to the real cycle. So, if we incorporate more you know losses what we have neglected then you may get in higher T s f c and lower specific thrust. So, uh, let us uh, look at the propulsive efficiencies and thermal efficiencies. Uh, if you uh, look at with respect to the pressure ratio across the compressor for same flight Mach number and same conditions of altitude of 12 kilometer and T T 4 1600 Kelvin right. If you look at uh, here this is your 
uh, dashed line is basically ideal one that is your thermal efficiency. This is your thermal efficiency and which is much higher in case of ideal, but in real cases this is is much lower values. And whereas, the propulsive efficiencies in case of real one you know it is having a higher value as compared to the ideal one right. Why it is so? Because if you look at the case of the velocity exit velocity in case of your um, real cycle will be smaller as compared to the ideal one. So, therefore, you will have a higher propulsive efficiency. And if you look at fuel consumptions, you know will be in case of uh, real one, it is having fuel air ratio will be lower because uh, you know in this pressure range, uh, but whereas in case of a lower pressure ratio, it will be having the higher values right and of course, it decreases if the pressure ratio across the compression. So, uh, and uh, this fuel air ratio because what happened you need to have a uh, may be large air uh, amount of air which you need to be inducting into that to overcome the resistance. So, therefore, may be the fuel air ratio is being higher right. Uh, being lower in case of a uh, real cycle analysis as compared to the ideal one. So, with this uh, stopover and we will uh, take an example in the next lecture.